The one who made the picture and made these thoughts, and you should try this. He said, after Salah, pick up your hand. And this is what you must say. Oh Allah, I'm having a resentment towards such and such person. Oh Allah, I'm not liking this person as much as I know I can like this person. Oh Allah, in my heart, place love for this individual. Now I'm not telling the young ones of here to go out and mess around and say, Oh Allah, I'm being love for my heart for a strange woman or a strange man. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that that makes it halal for you and I. That which is permissible for you and I. So anyway, regardless, if you did this, inshallah, you'll know this tremendous amount of enlightenment will come into your heart and you'll be able to achieve tremendous amount of bad and good. And finally, I thought of an closing topic, but maybe I will continue with OB regarding it. Another thing is, do not say things in which you do not have knowledge about. If you don't have the hard facts, then don't say it. Now, this sounds like a very Christianized argument. The Quran says it. Wala taqfuma alayhi Now, when the Quran says it, what he says, ah, the Quran says it, then you have to worry about it. No, no, no. You have to worry about it as well. Wala taqfuma alayhi That regarding which you do not have any knowledge about, do not attain it, and do not delve into it. Why? In as far as the eyes are when the hearing is concerned, as far as the eyes are concerned, as far as the heart is concerned, on the day of Qiyamah, it will be questioned. In other words, why did you look and try to investigate something that was not your concern? If it is not your concern that so and so is in a given place, then don't go behind that person to see, well, is she there? Is he not there? Why is he there? Why did he go there? Oh, is he double crossing me? If the matter doesn't pertain to you, it doesn't pertain to your family, it doesn't pertain to your life, let the matter go. Don't run around and look at that which is unnecessary. Also, when it comes to hearing, there is no need to become paranoid. I got to know what so and so is saying. If that information doesn't pertain to you, don't worry about it. Move on with your life. As far as your heart is concerned, it's a beautiful organ, it's a wonderful organ. And my dear respect to Muslim brothers, you'll notice that if you want your heart to suffer spiritually and physically, I'll give you the remedy to it. You want to get a heart attack in five ten years, simple. Worry about that which is not your concern. Deal with other people's issues. Look at that which is unnecessary. Hear that which is unnecessary. And keep on talking about it. And five years time, inshallah, if you wish to leave some money behind the Islamic society, you wouldn't mind. But we'll be there for you as well. In other words, I say the society has to keep, but it's a reality behind it. Look after your heart by looking at that which is good, so your heart doesn't get unnecessary pressure. Put good things in your ear, so you don't have to get any heart right or alternatively heart pressure or blood pressure and all those weird pressures you get out there. All I know is about the pressure of the side of the heart. There are no I don't worry about too much. But regardless, they are relevant regardless. And if you want to have an elimination of it, what are the techniques you can utilize is remember this ayah in putting yourself towards that which is necessary and to not and not towards that which is negligible and that which is not worthy of concern towards you and your family. And the Quran that Allah says, remember believers, whatever you undergo, whatever you go through, especially if it is something that is none of your business and does not concern you on the day of Qiyamah, you will be absolutely questioned regarding that. May Allah SWT help us and guide us in doing that which is good, hearing that which is good, seeing that which is good, going towards that which is good, so that way we can become better individuals, better so that we can become more of a solution towards society and not towards the problem that already exists all the way out there. May Allah SWT help us and guide us at all times. Wa alhamdulillah Before that, inshallah, the announcements will be made in about five minutes. Uh, on the 20th and 21st, there will be a small conference, but more information will be given regarding that. However, as far
far as that strategy is concerned, although the topic will be pertaining to the Sira of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I will be digressing a little bit. And I will write to each one of you to come for the following reason. I know how I talk here, but this talk is going to take place on the 20th of March, which, well, whatever it is, 20th, 21st of that Friday, is going to pertain primarily to the youth and is going to pertain to the family structure and is going to be linked to methods in which you can create a harmonious situation in your family. I mean, we all know what we are going through in our families. Husbands and wives know what they're going through. <coughs> Parents also know how after the first few years of marriage, certain things happen that you wish never happened. When children come into place, there are certain things that take place, etc., etc. In other words, we are going to take part in an interpersonal dialogue, in a relational dialogue from the Quranic perspective to help members of our community and basically is out there to better relate, not just towards one another on a society level, but on a family level. So inshallah, I will give you more information regarding that. But as far as the other questions are concerned, the Rashid inshallah will make more mention of that inshallah in about five minutes.